It's July 2nd, 2023. We're in Long Beach, California to catch some trains on the Pacific Harbor Line, the end of the Union Pacific and BNSF's trek west towards Southern California. I've always been a big fan of catching short line railroads. I learned about this one through an issue of Trains Magazine and definitely had to check it out in my time in Southern California. What stuck out was the promise of nonstop action and a number of trains which is not usually the case on short line railroads, which typically operate a small amount of trains and are pretty hard to catch. My first catch was not a Pacific Harbor Belt train, rather a Union Pacific train backing into the West Basin in the modal terminal with a stack of containers mostly from Evergreen. I followed that train into the basin and found my first Pacific Harbor Line train. Locomotive number 50 leads a switching job in the West Basin Intermodal Yard. Locomotive number 50 is a battery electric locomotive from EMD. The Pacific Harbor Line has one of these locomotives, which was recently acquired a few months before the filming of this video. This locomotive is testing on the railroad and is performing a lot of switching jobs. Locomotive number 50 disappeared further into the West Basin Yard, so I took that opportunity to drive over to the locomotive shop for the Pacific Harbor Line Railroad. A lot of the locomotives are older SD40 type locomotives, retrofitted to be more environmentally friendly, along with some genset locomotives and, of course, the battery electric locomotives soon to join the fleet. I make the short trip back over to the West Basin, where engine number 50 is concluding its switching operations at the West Basin Intermodal Terminal. The official designation for locomotive number 50 is an SD40JR, a dual locomotive rebuilt from the SD40-2. Locomotive number 50 boasts 2.4 megawatts of power and regenerative braking, meaning that when the locomotive brakes, power is diverted back into the batteries. Locomotive charging is done at a 700 kilowatt or 1400 kilowatt stationary charging station. For comparison, the strongest electric vehicle charging station is 350 kilowatts. That's pretty powerful. Locomotives like these are ideal for switching operations, where loads are shorter and distances are shorter. They're never far away from the charging station at the yard. The Pacific Harbor Line is leading the charge and the future of rail transportation. This locomotive was unveiled to the fleet on May 4th, 2023. It's pretty exciting to see such a new locomotive being tested on such a busy rail line.
I was able to jump ahead of the locomotive and film it one last time before it entered the yard. Shortly after locomotive number 50 entered the yard, locomotive number 70 pulls the WWL vehicle services switcher out of the Pacific Harbor Line yard. Locomotive number 70 was acquired by the Pacific Harbor Line in December 2007, and it has the designation MP20C-3, but was rebuilt from an SD40-2. Locomotive number 70 was originally locomotive number 5068 of the Canadian National. Many of the locomotives on the fleet were built by Motive Power Industries to conform with California 2-4 emission standards. Railroads based entirely in California must comply with emission standards on all of their locomotives, which is why you see a lot of gen sets and a lot of rebuilt locomotives on the short line railroads in the state. After catching the train on Avalon Boulevard, we drive over to Fry's Avenue to see the locomotive using a Y to turn itself around so that it can back the cars into the WWL facility. WWL is a car importer, importing a number of foreign cars from foreign factories into the United States. These containers are likely empty and will be loaded with cars and pulled back into the Pacific Harbor Line yard for distribution across the United States. I got to the other side of the street just in time to see the switcher pushing the cars into the yard. The port of Long Beach is huge. It's a massive web of tracks with each spur owned by a different shipping company. The majority of traffic that the Pacific Harbor Line carries is container traffic coming in and out of the different ports on Long Beach. That being said, this and the next train are examples that the Pacific Harbor Line also does switching operations for local industries and other types of port operations, including this auto terminal. That being said, due to the time-sensitive nature of intermodal transport, intermodal trains do take priority and other trains have to dodge those intermodal trains as they make their way around the Pacific Harbor Line right-of-way. The history of this railroad is really interesting. The Pacific Harbor Line Railroad was incorporated in 1998 as a way to level the playing field for shippers. Prior to this, the railroads were owned by Southern Pacific, Union Pacific, and BNSF. This complicated web of track meant that each railroad could block each other and delay each other's shipments. The PHL creates a level playing field by switching all customers equally, meaning that no railroad has control over which trains get priority. Heading back to the other end of the yard, we see Pacific Harbor Lion Railroad engine number 64. Engine number 64 is an MP20C-3 rebuilt from a Southern Pacific SD40R7340.
Heading back to the other side of the yard, we see engine number 64 again, and engine number 20, leading the San Pedro local. Engine number 20 is an MP20B-3, rebuilt from Union Pacific 725 to the GP40. Union Pacific 725 originally belonged to the Denver Rio Grande and Western as engine number 3079. Immediately after locomotive number 20 passed, we see locomotive number 70 again pulling a loaded stretch of auto racks out of the WWL facility. The PHL is owned by the Anacostia Pacific Company. The PHL is one of two improvements that have really improved service to the Long Beach area. The second being the Alameda Corridor, just north of the PHL, which consolidates traffic for the Union Pacific and BNSF from Los Angeles' Rondo Junction into Long Beach. From the West Basin Intermodal Terminal, the San Pedro Local backs into the Rancho LPG facility. Driving a few miles down the road, I was able to catch the train doing some of its switching operations at the Rancho LPG facility. This is where I would leave locomotive number 20. I would drive next to the Alameda Corridor for some time before heading to Fullerton to catch some Metrolink trains. Those trains are included in the next video. Thank you for joining me on my day on the Pacific Harbor Line Railroad. I hope you learned a little bit about this really interesting switching operation on the port of Long Beach. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.